Hello everyone, so today I'll be making an uh, overview video about uh, how you could make your own little arcade cabinet and um, basically what uh, the, the tools that you'll need to make this arcade cabinet. So the most important part of uh, creating an arcade cabinet would be getting the joystick set up, the arcade joystick and uh, you'll need something like this in order for you to do it. It's called a DIY joystick and buttons parts. So some, it comes with a circuit board like that. Um, I think it would come with two sets of these things, including the joystick. It would come with a joy two joysticks, two boards, all the cables, um, about 16 buttons, so 8 for each one, so player 1 would have 8 buttons, player 2 would have 8 buttons, and that's how it is, so uh, these are all the parts that will come with it, and this part that I'm showing, these parts that I'm showing is just plug and play, so you don't have to know the polarity of any of the um, buttons or joystick connection it's just plug and play it's very simple so as you can see to, to connect the joystick it comes with this five um, wire connector and it goes into your joystick it only only goes in just one way so you can't get it wrong you, you're not going to short anything out so it just connects just one way goes into your joystick and it goes into the board the PCB right there and this is for the joystick and all the button controls are here there's 12 button controls so you can connect all eight into each one of these so for the buttons it's the same thing so you just connect it with this um, connector right here I think it's a three wire connector goes into your joystick I mean your button and it goes into any of these slots on your on your PCB right there or your circuit board so let's see this is button one red one here button two there button three you put it there button four there etc etc so that's how you connect it and it comes with this USB connector which you connect from one side and you just connect it into your computer or single board computer or whatever you want basically and I just drew out this simple diagram of how this joystick would be put into into a cabinet or a, or a box so it just goes in like this. You just have all the right cutouts. Make sure you got the right diameter for the holes. And then you just cut it out. And um, there's one, uh, this goes in from the top. And then you have another one that you just screw in from the bottom to fasten it. So that's how it goes in. Simple as that. And for the joystick, it will come with the screws and everything. So you just make sure you make the you drill the right uh, holes in to the board and you just screw it in basically and that's it for that so and the computer board the circuit board would be underneath and then it would all the wiring would be connected so this little board would be connected to your computer through a USB port and you would connect two of them to two USB ports to have the second controller and that's basically it and the type of computers that you could use for an arcade cabinet are um, you could use a um, single board computer like a Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 4 or Odroid or whatever, any single board computer that you could put some kind of um, 
program like RetroPie or RetroArc or whatever. So basically, or emulation station if it's for a single board computer. You could also use old computers, uh, a motherboard for old computers, like this Dell um, 4600 or 2400 is an old computer, something like that. It would probably have a Pentium 4 processor in it, maybe a socket 478, or you could use a uh, Dell Dimension um, computer if you want. And these would probably have, um, well, this is a Dell Dimension 2, uh, maybe a Dell Dimension E310, a Dell Dimension 510, 520, or whatever. These would typically come with Core 212 processors or some kind of Pentium 4 processor, which has a 775 uh, socket in it for it. Or you could use a Phenom, AMD Phenom computer, base computer, or whatever. Or AMD 2. That would work as well. So any computer that's that was probably made from 2003 to about 2008. That I would consider to be old computers. And they have uh, USB ports and everything, so you could connect your joystick there and have it set up like that and of course Raspberry Pi 3's, 4's and other single board computers also have USB ports so they can be connected to the joystick as well and you could use modern computers if you want and the good thing about modern computers is that they could play all types of emulators you know a newer computer would be a computer that was made from, I guess, 2009 to the present. You know, maybe an i7-960, uh, maybe a, Z, a computer with a Xeon processor with a W3-690 um, socket 1366 uh, base CPU or or a newer 10th generation i7 or a 3rd generation i7, 4th generation, 6th generation or whatever. This would be considered newer computers and you could use these as for your arcade setup as well. But for a newer, newer computer it would probably be better if you just uh, made the joystick you know, and just connected it to the computer instead of just having a cabinet because newer computers are more versatile and you may not just want to use it for just games like that. So, but if you want to use this in an arcade cabinet, you can as well. That's not going to be a problem. So, here are the advantages and disadvantages of. Uh, the various types of computers. So Raspberry 3, Pi 3, you're probably going to be able to play everything from Atari 2600 to a PlayStation 1, but you're going to have problems um, running any of these other types of emu emulators like N64, Nintendo 64, Sega Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, or PlayStation 3, or PlayStation P. That's, I think that's PlayStation Portable that has like a PlayStation uh, 2 base processor in it you're not going to run any of these so that's going to be a limitation but if you want a classic uh, arcade cabinet with only classic games that that would work something like this would work for Raspberry Pi 4 it's a lot better it's a little it's a lot better than the Pi 3 it's definitely has more power and is more versatile. You're going to be able to play Atari 2600 to PlayStation 1 without a problem. Um, you could play some N64 games. It's going to be a little bit slow on the slow side compared to a uh, old computer or a newer computer. And um, PlayStation 2, I guess 
you could play some games, but most games aren't going to run very good. PlayStation 3, uh, just forget about it. It's not going to run. Old computer, it's going to be able to run Atari 2600 to PlayStation 1, no problem. N64, I think it should be okay, as long as you have a 64-bit processor. The others, you're going to struggle. It's not going to run a Sony... I mean a Sega, Dreamcast, Play, PlayStation 2, 2 or PlayStation 3. Newer computer can probably run everything without any problems. As long as you have a good graphics card in it. And it goes for the same for the old computer. As long as you have a good graphics card, you should have more options. So for a newer computer, Atari 2600, PS1 good. N64, no problem. Uh, Sega Dreamcast, good. PlayStation 2, good. PlayStation 3, good. Probably Game uh, GameCube, Nintendo GameCube, no problem. So it should be able to run a wide range of different types of um, emulators without any problems. And the software that you'll need for a computer would be a uh, something called RetroArch for x86 or x64 based computer and um, let's go to RetroArch's website so as you can see on the RetroArch's website they have many different versions of RetroArch they have one for Windows XP that would probably be for an older computer. Most older computers have 32-bit versions of Windows XP on them. Um, they also have one for, I guess, Windows 2000 to Windows 98. This is old, and even still older, Windows 98 to 95. Probably these are not going to be the options. Probably it's going to be this or this. So uh, Windows 10, that's to Windows 7, that's for a newer computer. So if you have a newer computer, you're probably going to install a 64-bit installer for RetroArch. If you have an older computer, it's going to be Windows XP, Windows Vista, 32-bit. That's how it's going to be. So um, for a Raspberry Pi or Odroid or whatever, you're probably going to use something called RetroPi, which is a version of... Uh, it's also called Emulation Station. It's kind of like RetroArch, except it, except it's for the ret, except it's for single board computers like these, like a Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 4, or Odroid, or whatever. They have so many varieties. And let me go here and go to RetroArch, RetroPi actually. See, they have some for old droid as well, not just for uh, Raspberry Pi. And you could install it even on uh, operating systems like Debian and Raspbian also. If you have Raspbian on your Raspberry Pi computer, or if you have Ubuntu on uh, your old droid computer, you should you should be able to install RetroPie on it. And these are just the image files for it. I have tutorials about this if you want to look at it. And that's and I'll have all the links connected to the video descriptions below and also on the end screens as well. So these are the options, types of computers that you could use for your arcade cabinet. So next one. You'll need a sound amplifier if you're using a um, if you're using a computer or a single board computer as a uh, arcade cabinet. If you're using it in an arcade cabinet, so let's start with the sound amplifier. So this part, 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, would connect from your computer's 
3.5 millimeter stereo jack, which computers have, and uh, single board computers like Raspberry Pis also have. You connect it from here and put it in there, and that's for the input basically. And this knob is a potentiometer, you could adjust the volume for it. And uh, this is where you connect your uh, speakers. You would use some speaker like this, a 10 watt audio speaker that looks like this. And you would put it into your RK cabinet like that, screw it in. So this is just an overview video. This is not a detailed video, but it should give you some ideas on how to do this. And if you can't build the cabinet yourself, you could get someone else to build it put all the right holes in it and then you should be able to just assemble it and if you know how to do uh, woodworking and stuff like that and use the various tools to drill holes in the panel and everything um, it's uh, probably going to be less expensive if you do that than having someone else do it for you but for me it's really not possible for me to do this because I live in a small apartment so I don't have a workshop so usually when I have these built I just have someone I kinda like contract out the work to somebody who knows how to do this type of stuff and has a workshop so that's how I used to do it when I used to sell these cabinets you know so uh, the way you connect this is you need audio stereo speaker wire cable like that and I'll leave it in the video description below they usually come in the spindles of probably I don't know it's like maybe anywhere from 50 to 100 feet long you just have to cut it and then you just have to kind of like get it to get it like this strip it and then you would take this part right here, one end like this. Let's say this is positive and this is negative. So uh, the positive end goes here. You would just solder this on here with a soldering iron and rosin core solder. And then the other end, let's say this is the positive part. You you take you unscrew this with a Phillips head screwdriver, and then you would just. Um, screw in the connector in there right there so let's say this was a right speaker positive it would go here to other end to positive if it's negative like here I solder this on here and then other end it goes negative like that so for both speakers so this is just one speaker so you would have to do the same with the other speaker and if it isn't uh, noted what is positive or negative, usually the negative end is shorter than the positive end. So that's how you know. But usually they would have positive or negative on there. So you would be able to route the cables. And this unit, I don't think it comes with a power cable, but uh, or a power adapter, I'm sorry. but. Uh, this particular unit uses a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter um, power adapter. And you could use anything from 5 volts to 27 volts. Since the speaker is 10 watts, I guess 9 by 2 would be fine. That would provide 9 volts times 2 amps is equal to 18 volt, 18 watts. That should be enough the power these cables I mean these these uh, pow these uh, speakers sorry or you could get 9 volt by 3 amps or whatever so this is just an example so make sure the power supply has enough power to power up the speaker so yeah, this does fall a little bit short because it's 18 watts. And the combined output of both speakers would be 20 watts. So I'd I probably have to get a 3 amp power adapter 9 volt with the right connections, like 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter. Okay, 
now let's move to this thing here. This is just a drawing of a pseudo um, arcade cabinet, which I just drew up. The computer would be right there. For example, the buttons will be here, I guess. Joystick there. Speaker would be here. Or the speakers. There's one here, one there. You get all the wiring. And then you just connect this to the amplifier. And then you connect um, the amplifier to your um, computer through the 3.5 millimeter stereo port that connects to the computer and that's it very simple and uh, the monitor is here of course and this is connected to your uh, single board computer to computer so let's move on to the next one for the types of monitors that you can use uh, you could use um, any um, type of uh, LCD monitor as long as it has the right ports in it. So um, this one has a micro HDMI port. You would need to get a cable called micro HDMI to HDMI. And you would connect the micro HDMI portion here and the HDMI portion to here. This is a HDMI port. And as for the other one, let's see, for a computer, let's say, this, this is, let's say this is a back panel for a computer. Um, this would be the VGA, 15 pin VGA port. And make sure you have a monitor that has a 15 pin VGA port. And most modern monitors should have a 15 pin VGA port and uh, basically you could um, you could use the HDMI ports on a single board computer but you can use something else too let me go here This is a Ugreen micro HDMI to HDMI VGA adapter. So this connects to your uh, Raspberry Pi through the micro HDMI port. And you can connect this to your uh, VGA monitor. look at this one I think this one is better this one you connect from your micro HDMI port to your Raspberry Pi and there's an audio 3.5 millimeter audio port and that could connect to your um, sound amplifier which is right your sound amplifier and then the sound amplifier would be connected to the speaker and that would amplify your sound so um, I would say this is a much better bet so you could you could you could get the sound from your uh, HDMI and it could just split it get the sound out 
then you could just connect it to your amplifier. So this would work for the for the monitor portion for single board computers. And as for um, this one, you have a HDMI port. You would connect it to the HDMI port for let's see a Raspberry Pi two or a Raspberry Pi three. And that's basically it. So for the monitor part. Uh, you do have to take into consideration of uh, basically uh, if if the monitor basically has the ports that you need to connect it to. So if you wanted to use a CRT monitor, then it would be possible if you have a 15-pin. VGA port because most um, CRT monitors, cathode ray tube monitors, uh, utilize 15 pin VGA ports. And let me show you an example. This is a vintage CRT monitor and it usually utilizes the 15 pin VGA port. They all have it basically. Yeah, these all have uh, VGA ports. The only problem with this type of monitor is that it has a lot of depth. It's very long and it's very heavy. But uh, if you have a monitor like this in your arcade cabinet, it will definitely give you the true arcade experience because um, retro um, arcade machines used CRT monitors but if you don't want to you could you can always use a more modern LCD or LED monitor if you want it so that's also an option so that's how you do it so as for DVI HDMI you could connect it to your monitor through HDMI and you can also connect the audio portion to your um, sound amplifier and get sound that way and I have a video on how to do that for a Raspberry Pi 3 so I, I'll leave that in the video descriptions also on the details on how to do that so this is just an overview it's not a detailed video on how to do it but um, and it's this video is not for like like novices either so if you have experience with electronics and stuff like that this will give you an idea on how to like uh, make your own arcade cabinet and I built a few myself and I for my friends and um, they were quite happy with it this was like um, maybe two, 2012 2010 almost uh, let's see about 2012 9 to uh, 9 to 13 years ago <laughs> yeah, that was quite a long time ago and I didn't use a Raspberry Pi to do that because they didn't have like Raspberry Pis back then or single board computers which were powerful enough to do it. I just used a regular um, a Pentium 4 motherboard to do it and um, it's basically the same concept. It's, it's not any more different basically. So 
anyways uh, and all the parts and everything I'll leave it in the video descriptions below so if you're interested you could you could put it together and um, you would need to know how to solder uh, to do this I mean some parts of it only the parts for um, connecting the audio stereo wire cable to the speaker but if you don't want to use a speaker or a sound amplifier you don't have to you can just use regular uh, speakers as well that's not going to be a problem as well so that's that's another option you could take so you could just cut this entire part of it the sound amplification part and not use it you could just use a speaker with a potentiometer which is which has which is powered you know as well so that's also an option so anyways thanks for watching by Ace 1000KS 1975 signing out